Have you ever wondered how hitboxes work and why people constantly complain about them? Have you ever stabbed the air next to a monster and somehow landed a critical hit? Today, we're going to talk about how collisions work. All right, to detect any kind of collision, whether it's a character standing on the ground or running into a wall or getting hit by a bullet, there are really two things we need to do. First, we need to define the boundaries of where a collision can occur on a character, usually called the hitbox. And second, we need to figure out if different boundaries are intersecting and what should happen when they do. So first, the hitboxes. Now, if I fire a bullet at a character, as long as that bullet hits the character's model, they should take damage, right? While that seems pretty obvious and intuitive, that would be a very computationally expensive way of doing things. To check if a bullet is inside a character's model, which is usually a pretty complex curved surface, we might have to use a lot of calculus and processor intensive subdivisions, all occurring for each frame on every object in the scene. So we need to make some approximations. It would be more efficient to only remember a few values instead of a huge set of points and lines. We could have a character's hitbox be a sphere, for example. We'd only have to remember the radius and center of the sphere and then check if something is inside of it. But as you can see, you could attack all of this empty space around the character and have it count as a hit, which would be pretty confusing. So let's say the next best compromise is to put a box instead of a sphere around the character. For most objects and characters in modern games, there's still enough extra white space that would make this pretty confusing and game-breaking, but it works fine for something like Minecraft, where the characters are already pretty blocky and combat precision isn't that important. But for most games, especially competitive ones, we have to compromise computer performance for accuracy a little bit more. So instead of having one big box, we split the character into lots of parts and give them many different hierarchical boxes. Some people will study these really carefully in competitive games because the key is not to aim for the character's model that you see on screen, but their invisible hitbox, which can sometimes be different by several pixels. Breaking a character's hitbox into this hierarchy also adds more depth to gameplay, like how you can cut off tails in Dark Souls or Monster Hunter. In these games, for example, you might have a separate hitbox for the tail associated with some invisible health meter. And sometimes these enemies will have very specific and unintuitive hitboxes for the tails, and you may end up killing them before you whittle away at their tail or whatever other appendage you were going for. So we have our characters and monsters and bosses all split up into many different hitboxes, and we have all these shapes that can collide with each other, but how do we know if they're actually making contact? Well, there are two mindsets for this. We can try and calculate the exact instant two objects will collide ahead of time, or for each frame, we can check whether two objects have already intersected. So let's say we have a character firing a bullet at a wall. With the first method, let's say we know the bullet is going two meters a second and the wall is two meters away. So we tell the game to have the bullet bounce off the wall in exactly one second. The second method, however, would check all pairs of objects each frame to see if they've already collided. So it would check the bullet and the wall, the bullet and the person, the wall and the person, and so on. While the first method is way more efficient because it's one single calculation, it's rarely used in games. If the environment changes between the time the bullet is shot and the time it collides with the wall, one single calculation cannot account for that. The second method, however, is checking for collisions each frame so it can account for all of these changes. But it's incredibly inefficient. If a level has n objects, that's n choose two combinations of pairs that have to be checked. So for 100 objects, that's 5,000 pairs that would have to be checked each frame. There are a few ways we can improve performance here, which mainly involves pruning trees. Basically, to put it very simply, if this whole box is our level, we can subdivide it into smaller groupings of objects and only check objects that fall within the same grouping or subdivision. 
So to get a little more technical, we could say that this node represents the whole level, and then we can split it into the left half and right half of the level, and then continue to split it in half or based on certain object groupings. Now, if we know an object is in the upper left of a level, we don't have to look at any of these branches or these branches, and we've cut down on a lot of computations. This is what pruning trees means in computer science. So there's a lot more that goes into pruning bounding box trees, but that's a topic for another video. For now, I hope you guys understand a little bit more about collisions and why hitboxes can be so frustrating. It's a trade-off between accuracy and computational performance. So have a happy day wherever you are, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!